Hey guys, how are you doing? I get this question quite a bit. What is better, Golang or Node.js for your server? So um, I'm going to be comparing Golang and Node.js on six different criteria. And those criteria are now hidden with my face, but I will show you those criteria one by one and we'll go over them and then we'll try to judge whether Golang is better or Node.js. Now you, sh you have to know that I use Node.js a lot. So I've built a lot of SaaS products and I um, consult a lot of clients and I use Node.js heavily, right? I'm a heavy Node.js user, but I'm also a heavy Golang user. And if you didn't know, this channel has more than 100 Golang videos and about 40 different projects with Golang. So go and check out the different playlists that I have. Um, anyhow, so now going into Golang and no versus Node.js, the first criteria is, uh, I think you can see it on my screen, is performance. Now, when it comes to performance, Golang is light years ahead of Node.js and there is no contest because there's so much content available online which uh, supports that Golang is, uh, basically Golang blows Node.js out of the water. And the most famous one is this article by Uber Engineering. I'll leave the link to this article in the description box. Uh, basically, they're saying that they were able to build uh, the highest query per second uh, second service using Go. So when they shifted from Node.js to Golang in 2016, they um, they got amazing uh, response. They got amazing uh, performance using Golang. And there are hundreds of these kind of articles. A lot of companies, they shifted from Node.js to Golang and they have seen uh, amazing, amazing um, performance with Golang. And this is also the reason why I started using Golang in a lot of my microservices. So whenever I build products, they're mostly microservices and a lot of them are using Node.js, many are using Ruby, many are using Python because you have to do a lot, all of that machine learning stuff, right? And But a lot of the microservices uh, very recently, like since 2020, I've started shifting them to Golang and I'm seeing more and more uh, better and better performance. I'm having to use less and less resources, all right? So we'll, we'll talk about that more now. The next is community. Now, Node.js community is um, really, really uh, big and supporting and active. And Golang's community is not uh, that big right now. I don't know the reason behind it, uh, even though they have been um, you know, in the market since quite some time. I don't know why Golang's community is not as active as Node.js. But uh, as, as far as um, community is concerned, Node.js easily wins. And packages. Now, packages was something that Node.js had a huge win over, uh, over Golang for, for quite some time because NPM was there for Node.js and Golang, uh, very recently, mod has come out, GoMod. Uh, so Golang is kind of getting there. We are seeing a lot of different packages for Golang as well, but again, uh, it doesn't come uh, close to Node.js. But, um, but I would say that all the things that you do need, right, um, are there with Golang and you can do quite a lot of damage with Golang as well. But obviously it's not as much as Node.js. So with the performance, Golang wins, community, Node.js wins, and packages, Node.js wins. Now comes the part about concurrency and resource utilization. And this is where Golang again shines because uh, Golang is extremely concurrent, has a lot of parallel processes, a lot of multi-threading, -threading, and it's like extremely performant with all of those things, right? And resource utilization is very, very low because you can completely um, you know, take benefit of all different multiple cores that your processor has. Uh, so this is why, um, Golang again wins here. And then comes salaries. Now this is, um, if you're a developer and if you're, or if you're an engineer and if you're a junior uh, engineer who's looking for a better career, then uh, salaries is probably what you are uh, looking at as a criteria, right? And um, for Golang, the salary is quite high. So I found this another article. Um, it's on this website called qvault.io and this uh, it's quite a great article. I'll, I'll leave the link for this article as well in the description box because I really liked it. And uh, this says that Node.js developers uh, have a median salary. So don't look at average, always look at median salaries. That's very important. So Node.js developers have a median salary of $91,000, whereas Go developers have $118,000, which is quite a lot, uh, if you ask me. It makes a lot of, it makes a lot of difference, right? Um, so, and, and there are a few more articles, I'll leave a link to those uh, as well, uh, where it says that basically 33%, uh, so uh, uh, just by learning Golang, developers have a direct correlation of 33% bump in their salaries, and that's, that's just amazing, right? And then you have demand and supply. Now, Golang is heavily in demand, and it's going to be more and more in demand, and supply uh, now is a problem with Golang because there are not a lot of developers available, and that means that people will be ready to pay a lot and people will be ready to hire you very easily. Uh, whereas 
uh, with uh, with Node.js, there are a lot of developers available. So even if um, you know uh, you want to act pricey, there will be a lot of uh, resource, uh, lot of replacement easily available. Uh, you know, for the um, the recruiter, you know, recruiter can easily replace you. But with Golang, if you know Golang really well, it'll be very difficult to replace you, and you can charge a lot of money, even though you don't have a very good developer, a very very extensive experience, or an extensive or a very great portfolio or a great experience. It's completely all right. You can still charge quite uh, quite a lot of money. Uh, so these are the six different criteria that I wanted to compare Go versus Node.js. And this is why I think Golang, um, like 2022 and beyond, Golang is going to win because the things that it's lacking on, which is community and packages, are very easily fixable. I mean, you can fix this very easily because community, the more Golang developers we'll have, the better the community will be, the, the bigger the community will be, and the more packages uh, will be created. And that's the trend that I'm seeing right now. People are creating more and more packages for Golang. And... Um, uh, I, I'm not sure if they will overtake Node.js and NPM, but um, they will come really close. And uh, and you know, even right now, you have all the things that you really need to build things with Golang. So I don't think there's a lot of things missing. But uh, you know, whatever that you feel is missing will also uh, be available in a few years' time. Um, and the other things that are not easily fixable, like the concurrency and resource utilization, is um, and, and the performance. On those things, Golang already wins. So, in my opinion, I would say that if you are going to build anything related to a server from 2022 and beyond, Golang uh, needs to be there on your radar. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.